Heavenly Delusion is kind of flying under a lot of people's radars and- Oh! 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 And it's pretty good. It's just another day in this serene, peaceful school. You hear the warm laughter of children as these kids frolic around, and then... As soon as you enter the outside world, you see how beautiful an apocalypse can be. The once crowded streets are now completely silent and only inhabited by overgrowth and ruin. Then the questions start to creep in. What happened? How are the two worlds linked? Why is this little bitch got six watches on her arms? Then you're hit with monsters, laser beams, then it's chill. Then more monsters, then go-kart races? When you think of an apocalypse, zombies. You probably think of zombies. But beyond the horror of the undead and the even more horrifying human nature, there's an inherent sense of adventure. And this world captures this word perfectly. Kiroko and Maru travel from clue to clue in this beautiful post-apocalyptic Japan to find heaven. And this dead world is surprisingly full of life. The two are constantly running into peaceful little pockets of civilization like this town that smokes a little shweed. But you know, it's still the apocalypse and human beings are still dick fucks. Thankfully, these kids are in Japan, not the US, where they're John wicking down children. <laughs> oh. Oh my. Oh my god. These monsters called man-eaters are on the prowl. A mob is waiting in ambush. A fucking bear pops out of nowhere. There are surprises around every corner, but even with all of this danger, human beings are excellent adapters. And the little tribes they run into look like regular people. These regular folks probably look like your aunt's creepy husbands. I'm trying to touch my booty hole all the time, man. Quit it. I'll never quit. My booty hole is reserved for the creator Masakazu Ishiguro because with character building and world creation like this, he can jump right in. <laughs> He has this amazing ability to create connections in less than a couple episodes. These might be some of my favorite side characters I've ever come across, and I put side in quotes because every character actually matters in the beautiful cacophony. Damn, did I just say cacophony? Mm. Like this shit, it hits hard, man. It hits really hard. As you probably guessed by now, this isn't the type of anime that holds your hand. Luckily for me, none of it was overly complex, but there are nuances about relationships you aren't told. You're expected to notice subtle emotions and you actually can because Studio IG did such a fantastic job with the animation. Important things and major events don't wait for Kiruko and Maru to show up, they just happen in the background like real life. And apart from being dope ass characters, the two are subtle little vehicles to explore this world. Subtle like the segue into the next- Did someone say vehicles? They're go-kart races? Yeah, it doesn't look like that. But these little go-karts are crucial to the world building, and here's why. If you notice, these little buggers don't run on gas. They run on electricity, but they don't tell you that shit. You just pick it up. In other stories, it would most likely be- You see, these electro carts, they don't run on gas because gas is a hard resource to cover. Well, well, please don't make me deep throat any more fucking information. I want to call this approach the FromSoft approach because if you've ever played any of the Soul series, the reason the Souls worlds work so well is because you're not told you're in the world. You are in the world. You're enveloped in it. Discovering new things by yourself, finding new information that you yourself are picking up. That's insanely rewarding, and it's BAM! Respectful. When the creator respects and believes their audience to pick up on these little nuances, it makes the world more charismatic, and that draws in attention. There are moments in this anime where you never find out the truth, and that's okay. Not everything is knowable, nor should they be. Some information is buried with the ruins, and this adds so much mystique to the world. It's the little things like this that add enormous enormous amounts of detail and wonder to this world, and that rule applies to our two travelers. We have Maru. He is a young boy that has a unique talent for touching the hearts of others. Oh, shit. She's got a good grip on it, you know? He's a handful. And we have Kiruko. She's Maru's bodyguard, and she can't count for shit. And she's a little, you know, fucked in the head. She holds a little mini Death Star, but her real talent is her wits. Her fight IQ, along with her sense of survival, is pretty incredible. Kiroko is looking for these two dudes on the way to Maru's mission, which is to find this place called Heaven and stab a person with the same face as him with this injection device. These two are just lovable from the start. You immediately get an older sister and little brother vibe, and fuck, I forgot this was Japan. Other than the super tropey interactions, the two start to really grow on you because the creator broke the golden rule of anime. He cheated. It wasn't fair that they were genuinely entertaining and dare I say even heartwarming. Everyone knows that anime characters should only talk in exposition. There just wasn't enough throat thrusting of information here. What a breath of fresh air. I mean, horrible atrocity. In all seriousness, you know what I've never said? Hey, we're missing that guy in our group that over explains things all the fucking time. And I've probably never said that because I have no friends. 
But if I did have friends, they behave like actual human beings and joke around in a way that isn't autistic. They have each other's backs, they pick each other up, they're buddies and I'm not jealous of them. This leads to such a genuine connection between the two characters that you also start to panic when Kiroko loses Maru. But in fact, my boy Maru was, you know... He was furiously masturbating in the next room. And even that adds to the realness to their character. Maru is a young boy and, uh, you know, he's down bad and he's going through some changes and Kiroko is fucked up. But terrified about being alone again. I'm not going to say shit because expanding on Kiroko's backstory will spoil one of the craziest backstories I've ever seen period. But this review gets crazier, so you know, keep watching. Parallel to Maru and Kiruko's story, there is a school filled with fucking weirdos if I'm being frank. This side of the story revolves around Tokyo, Mimihime, and Kona. And oh my god, what the fuck is that thing? Kids here just be climbing up walls like Spider-Man, surviving a hundred foot drops. There's a pregnant robot lady with an attitude. Girls are making out with other girls? That is totally acceptable. Their side of the world is where they keep foreshadowing things and give you nuggets of information that you desperately want to know. Like Kona draws these weird creatures and wait a minute, something's fishy here. This is honestly one of the strongest things about this anime. It bombards you with suspense and gives you just little breadcrumbs of information so it doesn't make your interest starve to death, but you're still hungry for more information. That flow of information is slightly abused. Now, it's not the type of abuse to make you scream daddy or mommy or choke me till my eyeballs turn purple or anything, but Mr. Masakazu, also known as daddy, definitely knows how to build anticipation, but sometimes it's a red herring just for tension's sake. But I don't want to levy this as a straight up criticism. A lot of the time you're taken into the mind of these kids and there are thought processes to explain the tension. And if you look at the world as a whole, it makes sense that these kids are paranoid. So maybe that's why Kiruko is a little too perceptive to the point where she's a little OP. And oh yeah, the very obvious criticism that everyone has with Kiruko and Maru. Heavenly Delusion? is a good-ass anime. The characters make me laugh, they make me wonder, they make me cr not cry, they make me gay. And I think this might be one of the most realistic adaptations of an actual apocalypse. It was certainly the bastion, or heaven, if you will, I was looking for this season, because I'm not really into this shit. I imagine you watched this far because you have a very good eye for excellent anime like me. <laughs> Thumb me super fucking hard and subscribe if you haven't. If you need more excellent anime to fill your life, watch this review. See you. Bye-bye.